everybody. I'm DJ High Praise. And I'm Babby Mason. And, and this, this is Comfort, Comfort Zone. Zone. This is the time when we get together to talk about music and talk about gospel music specifically and talk about that music that you love, that music that makes you feel good. That's right. And music that makes you think. Makes you think. <laughs> you know what I mean? More importantly. Well, because, yes, gospel music is uh, a lot of times... Uh, built around emotion or yes. music that makes us emotional. Yes. You know, the beat uh -huh. and the rhythm and the style. Uh -huh. But what is gospel music without the gospel? What is gospel okay? music without the gospel? What is gospel music without the message? Well, that's what I'm asking. Of, of the gospel. Uh -huh. So, you know, we got to get back to the story. We do have to get back to the story because the story of Jesus is the reason why we're here, right? That's right. It's I'm all telling about you, our, our message, lives. The gospel. That's right. The gospel is, is that story. So let, let, let's talk about some of the songs that make us feel good and and help to solidify that story now i usually say ladies first but i have to jump in there right now i'll give you permission today that's all <laughs> it's okay <laughs> so the the first song that comes to mind for me is a song entitled they say and this song was recorded by denise williams and philip bailey and it comes from a secular album entitled i'm so proud now, now, now let me just say this this song, it really helped to solidify my relationship with the Lord and helped me to understand who he was. Now, see, I about, didn't have about a church. How old were you at the time and where were I you? I was 19 at the wow. time, living at home in Philadelphia in my mother's house. Now, let me, let me just set this up for you a little bit. I bought a brand new stereo i had laid it away some people y'all remember some y'all remember Lay away. before how much we had you, credit cards wait a minute how much did you put down on it every week i don't even i don't even remember <laughs> i may have put 20 dollars on it a week until i got it out of layaway and i was so excited the day that i brought it home and i went and i bought this album by denise williams because she was one of my favorite artists at the time and my, my oldest brother would tell me you know before you you decide what the good songs are play the album front to back and so that's what I did. And so there were other secular songs on the album, like I'm So Proud, which was a remake of a, a Curtis Mayfield song and, 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 you know, a couple of dance tunes on the song. And then all of a sudden, this song They Say came on and I started listening to it and the beat was nice and I, I was enjoying it. But then as I began to listen to the words, something happened. Something mm. changed wow. in the atmosphere. And the song talks about Jesus and it started to ask provocative questions and things that the, that, that the world said about him, that he was just a man. He had a strangest plan, you know, and, and by the time it got to the vamp of the song, when Philip Bailey and Denise were, were trading back and forth, it was saying, Jesus, I'm going to praise his name. Mm. Now, for me, I was not churched. So. Praise His Name was a new concept for me. And, and this was on a secular... Secular album. ...project, yes. yes. By, a, by a, quote, secular artist. Artist, yes. Because there was a season that where Denise Williams came to the microphone as a gospel artist. That's right. And she started singing more gospel songs. But this was in that season where she had put this gospel song on the secular record. Yes, and what a testimony it was because she started to say, that there's a line in the song that says, well, let them say that it's a passing thing. No, but my life has changed. No, no, no. I'm not the same. Mm. Seasons pass and flowers fade, but what I found in Christ shall never pass away. I'm telling you, that put something in my heart, and that changed my life forever. Now, as a young 19-year-old, who was unchurched? Unchurched, right? Mm -hmm. Had had you had a any kind of a background in uh, loving gospel music or any kind of background in in church? I mean, was this like a new message to you or what? It was a new message because you know I grew up listening to gospel music on the radio. Now the music that I listened to on the radio was you know um, it was it was you know not to put anything any of the artists down but it was it was james cleveland it was the five blind blind boys of alabama it was you know quartet stuff but this was one of the first songs or should i say the first song that opened up revelation in my spirit the very first song the very first wow. song i really did not you know because when i was growing up i would hear songs and they would um be nice songs and i would learn something about god 
But for some reason, God used this song to touch my heart and to change it. Mm. And to help me to understand who he was. I mean, if, if it sounds strange, I'm going to say it like this. I actually received a vision of who Jesus is through that song. Wow. Because it explained to me. You know, as a as a songwriter, mm-hmm. you know, um, as a songwriter, and and this is this is just a shout out. This is just a word of um, a, of encouragement for every songwriter or every mm-hmm. wannabe songwriter that you have so much responsibility in your pen. Amen. I mean, when you sit down to write a song, yes, and particularly if it's you call yourself a Christian. Yes. Be so aware of the responsibility that there is somebody on the receiving end of your song. Yes. That you please hope and pray that what you say in that song is making a difference in their life. Because we're talking about a song. What you're saying is this song was a lifeline to you. It was. The next thing you know, your your heart was being touched yes. and, changed and changed for the kingdom of God. Amen. And it changed my life. It changed the, the direction of my life and how I thought and who I was supposed to be. Wow. It was that impactful for me. Well, you know, your I, I love the fact that you tell us in your story that you you didn't grow up in church. No. You heard gospel music, kind of like a lot of people who who didn't go to church, but they had an appreciation for God. Right. They had an a, a appreciation of God and appreciation for you know church music, but they were not involved in church, and church was not in them. That's right. Um, it was very different in my life. I happened to be a preacher's daughter, mm-hmm. so a very unlike your life. My whole life was church. <laughs> I, I mean, you. I was going to church nine months before I was born. That's <laughs> yeah, I, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how long I've been going to church. Uh-huh. My father was the founding pastor of our church. Wow. Uh, my my mother was the my mother was the choir director. Wow. So the moment that they discovered I could play three chords, uh huh. I you was, were in the I piano. Was hired. Did, did, did they sit you up on a on, on a uh, on a, a booster chair? Thank you. <laughs> my foot could, my feet couldn't even touch the pedals. Wow. That's how young I was when I got hired full time as the church piano player. Wow. And pl- nine years of age, I was hired full time. Wow. And so my whole life has been church. Wow. Uh, my whole life has been gospel music. But here's the beautiful thing: uh-huh. is that the message impacted my life just like it impacted your life. Wow. That's the power of the gospel. That is the power of the gospel. Can you elaborate on that a little bit, Babby? Because um, the thing about it, for those of us that, are, that that were not churched, we assume that that people who were born in church, that, that they have it all together. That that they, they just, wow. it just comes really? naturally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to say that. <laughs> Well, that's the perception. That's that's a myth. Okay. Because um, people in church don't have it all together. Because, I mean, if you look at us through the filter of the, the gospel and through the filter of the Bible, the Bible says uh, in Romans 3.23, now I'm not going to, I got some preaching me. Okay? Uh-huh. Oh, come on now. But I have to filter everything <laughs> through the word. Amen. Um, Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned. Yes. Wow. And, and fall and fall short. Of the glory of God. So if you even if your daddy is a preacher, wow, that doesn't give you a ticket. And see, that that's important because unchurched people like I was, we assume and see, and, and a lot of people, when they become Christians like me, they walk away from the church because they don't understand that. And see, and the problem is, is they fault God. Yes. When it's really the people. Yes. You know, this is, you know, the problem with the church, the church would be perfect if it wasn't for the for people. The, for the people. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for the folks. Okay. If it wasn't for the people. Right. The church would be perfect. But it's, it's amazing that you say that because that, you know, when, when I first started going to church and I don't want to make this all about me because it, it really is all about Jesus. But I'm going to say this. It, it, it's about learning and growing yes. in, in, in Christ. And, and that's something, it, it really does take time. For, so, for those of you that are listening and, and this is your story, hang in there. Hang in there and know that, that God will keep you. 
Yes. In spite of what you may see around you and, and give yourself some time to learn about God. Yes. And learn and, and be patient with his people. Yes. Be you patient know? with his people. Yes. And don't blame God. That's right. For the stuff people do. That's right. All because right? it's about him anyway. That's right. All of and, this. And this is about his love for us. And God never changes. People change. That's right. Uh, stuff changes. But God never changes. And, and you know what? The thing about it, we talk about these recordings, right? And, and you know, some people, I, I'll put it this way. Some people feel that, that records are kind of passe. And, you know, I like this song for a certain amount of time. But, you know, here on Comfort Zone, we're talking about those songs that have lasted over the years in our own personal lives. Right. So, so can I introduce one that one oh, yeah. that that's changed my life? Go for it. We're talking about those songs. You know, songs have a way of of chronicling. They do our our, our, our lives, and they become like a like a landmark. Some people call it the soundtrack of our lives. It's the soundtrack of our lives. If our life was a movie, that's right. Mm -hmm. These songs would be in the soundtrack of your life. Mm -hmm. And of course, we were all introduced to. Um, the Edwin Hawkins, yes, Edwin Hawkins singers, um, that song that crossed over and is now the national anthem of Europe. That great song, <laughs> Oh Happy Day. Yes, I mean that song. You talk about a song that changed culture. Well, oh, yeah. I got introduced to Edwin Hawkins, Walter Hawkins, Tremaine Hawkins. Loved the Hawkins, the entire Hawkins family, Lynette Hawkins, wow. the entire Hawkins family, and I got married. June 21st, Saturday, June 21st, 1980. Wow. And there was a song uh, that was sung by Tremaine Hawkins called You're Everything to Me. Wow. And I like that song. That's a, I love that song. And yeah. I ended up singing that song oh, wow. to my husband All right. in our wedding. Did you make him cry? I, he stood at the <laughs> altar. We're going to tell it. Cried like a baby. Uh huh. And that was 38 years ago. Wow. And, um, but, you know, it's powerful how, uh, and, and, and as a songwriter and as a recording artist, um, DJ High Praise, I get emails, letters, phone calls, uh, testimonies of how the songs, many of the songs that yes. God has given me, um, has ha have impacted people's lives. Oh yeah, and it's just amazing how a song like this. There's another artist by the name of Danny Bell Hall. Danny Bell Hall. I don't know how Hall. we're doing on, on, on our time, but I got no. I gotta, just go for it. I got to tell you this uh, this story. Uh huh. Um, as I as I began to grow in my uh, musicianship, as I began to stretch my wings as a singer and as a budding songwriter and as a college student, I transferred from the local community college in our area in Jackson, Michigan, to a Christian school not far from home, Spring Arbor, what used to be Spring Arbor College, okay. is now Spring Arbor University, a predominantly white uh -huh. um, free Methodist college. A Christian school, but, the, but That's they a gave this, of, of mainstream people. Yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> but they gave this black girl money <laughs> to go to school. Uh huh. And that, and I said yes. All right. So they gave me a scholarship, and the next thing I know, I was a student there. But on the day of registration in the Big Field House, they this the uh, the college had a radio, or still has a radio station. Uh huh. And the radio station was selling off. A lot of their old albums. Uh -huh. Now, for those of you who don't know what an album is, that's like a granddaddy CD. It's yeah. A, it's a big vinyl CD. Well, you know, basically. some of the hipsters now. They, they know, don't they? Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're buying vinyl and yes. they're releasing new new albums on vinyl. So that's it's right. vinyl, people. It's vinyl, yes. <laughs> and they were, they, the radio station was selling all these vinyl albums. And I was filing through this as the line was moving tediously slow through this registration process. There were these huge bins filled with record albums. And I was filing through them and I discovered this beautiful black woman sitting in this big rattan chair like uh -huh. Papa San, you know, one of those big chairs that you see at the Pier 1. Oh yeah. And her name was Danny Bell Hall. Oh man! And I, a sight unseen, I bought it. Oh wow! Never heard it before, uh -huh. but I was so intrigued because at that season in the mid seventies, I I wasn't really introduced to a lot of black female singers. Right. That that do that, that were doing Christian saying, music. That's right. That were singing mm -hmm. Christian music. And now, I, I can't even name any more other than Danny Bell. Yeah. And at she, the time, at the time, was singing. She was one of the disciples who sang behind Andre. Crouch, That's right. But she had she was stepping out as a solo artist. Right. And I discovered this album, and I took it home, and every song spoke to my soul. Wow. She became the answer to um, 
Aretha, Roberta, uh-huh. Carol King, all of those singers and those female singers and songwriters who sat, played the piano, mm-hmm. wrote their own songs. But Danny Bell's message resonated with my spirit because she Amen. sang about Jesus. Yes. And the arrangements were were contemporary for, oh, the, yeah. for, the, for the day. Time. Thank oh, yeah. you. And the messages were um were dressed up in an in a way that intrigued me as a musician and they spoke to me as an arranger and as a singer and as a songwriter and I devoured every single song wow. and that that album called uh This, this Moment, moment yeah, yeah, This oh my Moment goodness, y'all um was and and every album after that yes. uh, by Danny Bell Hall just changed literally changed my life and if you listen to you know Babby Mason you can hear the voice of Danny Bell you she definitely became can. really my my mother in the ministry it's, the Eli- it's like I Elijah met- and Elisha people okay oh my <laughs> goodness I just had what to say it did you just say you know and the day that I met her literally I wanted to bow down and call her blessed. Wow. And she has, you know, before she died, she became a dear friend. We actually recorded together on a project called uh, Sisters. Yes. Um, and a song that I actually wrote to be in the studio with Danny Bell Hall. Somebody singing, pray. Come on, somebody pray. That's my song. What? Now. You know I know that song. Me, Danny Bell Hall, and Margaret Becker. That yes. Was a, that was a trio with us. Oh, yeah. And it was a it was an amazing thing to be able to record with her. And, but she was one of those people that helped to birth me into the ministry we and you're talking today. about being in that comfort zone you know it's it all these songs that we're talking about they they have personal significance yeah and to, they create the moments yes of, of our life. soundtrack of, of our lives yes you know and, and and you know what we always go back to them don't we we always go back to those artists or to those songs well that's why they're called landmarks yes because when you get lost yes in life you go back to the place where you last knew where where you found your way. Oh yeah. If you could just make it back to the intersection of yes. whatever. And for some of us it's medicine. When when the world beats you up and, and you're out there and, and the enemy tries to make you feel like you're nobody, yeah. you put on those songs. Yes. They 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 just re energize you. They just they just put you right back in there and, and, and they just give you the strength and God speaks to you once again you know, in, in those songs. Think about the day you got saved. Yes. Nine times out of ten, there was a song that was being sung. Think Amen. about the day you got married. Yes. There were songs in your that- Can I tell you about the day we got married? My my lovely wife Leslie and I, we got married back on October the seventh, nineteen eighty nine. It was like yesterday. And we sang wow. a song to each other. What? When, Wait a minute. When I was trying Wait a minute. To Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew. Wait a minute. <laughs> See, here on Comfort Zone, we, re- we reveal some secrets. And I just heard the man say, we sang. I didn't even know you sang. I was going to say, she, she sang. I was trying to sing. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> was singing. <laughs> and you were trying to sing. Yes. I get I get it now. Okay. And that song was, was by BB and CC Winans entitled, I Owe You Me. Wow. And, yes. you know, and the thing about it, Again, you know, when, when I had gotten saved, you know, it was about church and about learning hymns and all that sort of thing. But there really weren't a lot of Christian love songs, you know, where, where you talked about loving somebody in, in a romantic way. Yeah. And so that was one of the songs that because we face it. Uh huh. Can we just can we just go there? For let, a let's be real for a second. Christians do, do Christians. Yes, they do. <laughs> That's why we have children. Y'all can read between the lines. <laughs> okay, you, you can you can go. I just want to just make that perfectly clear that Christians do have intimate relations. Yes, they do. You, she put that very well and very diplomatically. <laughs> <laughs> because she's a lady, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Yes, yes, she is. So you so you uh that was a that was a song in your wedding? That was the song that we sang to each other. Wow. Yeah, and that was very significant. When I still listen to that song, I think about that moment, that that moment where we we exchanged our vows in front of our family and friends and our Mm. church family. It was just, it it was really a a blessing. Again, comfort zone. Yes. You know, when I hear it, it it takes me back there. Yes. You know, you You never forget. I'm I'm sorry, baby. I got to say this. Yes. To me, recordings are ordained by God. I believe that because... 
There are moments that are captured in time that keep giving year over year, decade after decade. Isn't that what the Bible is? Oh, yeah. It's a it's a it's recording. A record. It's a record. Wow. Of what God said centuries ago. Centuries ago. And we play it over and over, and over again. And now we have it in different formats. Yes, we you do. Know, you have an audio Bible. Yes. You have different versions and yes. paraphrases. For those but, of you that have uh, uh, gadgets like mm -hmm. iPads and iPhones, yes, and, it lives on your phone. Yes, but the, but it is a re it's a recording of the words you know that wow. God has spoken. Ba Babby Mason, she done got deep on us right now. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead on preach. Well, you can send you can send well, your offering to PO Box. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody say Amen. Amen. Well, you know. Um, DJ High Praise, I love that. I love your, I love your Thank name. You. The real name is Brian Brooks, so mm. AKA, AKA DJ, DJ High, High Praise. Praise. Um, but you know, I I remember as as a high school student searching for a place where I could land. You know, let me just say that I I grew up in an African American home. Mm -hmm. Um, my daddy was a, a Baptist preacher. I grew up in an era. era where our choir sang what we now call traditional black gospel music, mm -hmm. the music of... Which wasn't really that traditional, but we'll talk about that some other time. Well, you know, it was the music of uh, the Roberta Martin singers. Mm -hmm. It was the music of James Cleveland. And they were cutting edge in their day, but we'll talk about that some other time. Yeah, the Caravan. Yes. Jesse Dixon. Yes. Uh, you know, the music of the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, but there came... a a man who, like I said before, concerning Danny Bell Hall, there were not a lot of African Americans who were singing what we call contemporary Christian. That's right. And then uh, there came a man by the name of Andre Crouch. And Andre Crouch actually, before before I became a student at Spring Arbor, did a concert at the, at the college. Wow. And I sat, I still have this picture. Oh, wow. Oh, I took a, I took a snapshot of Andre and his band on stage. Oh, man. And um, I'm sitting there on like the third row, just l being soaked like a, I mean, taking it in like a sponge. Wow. Listening, listening to Andre Crouch sing, um, what was the opening of that, of that one record? It was an up-tempo song. Anyway, we'll come back to that. But his music was so cutting edge. Innovative. And so timeless. Can, can, can I say this? For those of us that were in the world at, at one time, we um, consider Andre Crouch to be the Sly Stone of gospel music. Yeah, wow. So those of you that know mm. who Sly Stone is, you know you know what I'm talking about. Wow, I hear that. I can, mm -hmm. I can hear that. But, but for those of us who were in church music, uh -huh. it... There was something, his music was like a breath of fresh air. It, it wasn't so um, uh, to the other extreme as far as musical styles were. Right. But it was con it was so contemporary and so innovative. Yes, it was but extremely yet, innovative. Extremely innovative, but it was beautifully yes. innovative. And it encompassed the whole message of the gospel. Yes. So he never compromised. The no, message. he never compromised. Never, never, never something compromised. Interesting that that, that uh, Bishop Marvin Winan said about Andre Crouch. He said Andre Crouch wrote songs that were innovative. They were simple, but they never sound the same. Yeah. You know, song after song, album after album, you can never find a song that <clears throat> sounds exactly the same as something else. You know, I believe. That there, that there comes an Andre Crouch, a, a person like Andre Crouch, once in a lifetime, in amen, a, or 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 once in a generation. Yes, um, he really stands in a class all, all by, by himself. himself. Can we say that again? All, all by, by himself, himself. <laughs> and his music um, is timeless. Yes, I can. It's just like the the message of the gospel, Ooh. you know. Uh, as as we record this, yes, uh, Billy Graham has just been laid to rest. Yes, and rest I have the awesome opportunity to sing in many Billy Graham crusades. And this week, 
since it's been or this last two weeks as our nation has been in mourning for Billy Graham yes. and appreciating his life, his ministry, his leadership, his legacy. I've been listening to his messages on Sirius XM radio. Oh, wow. They've been playing it all around the clock, 24 hours a day. His oh, wow. sermons, Billy Graham's messages, I believe, or his sermons, his crusades go back to all the way back to 1949. I think he preached his first crusade in 1949. I, you're right about that, baby. And um, if you listen to Billy Graham crusades and listen to his messages, Billy Graham's approach was simple. Yes. I mean, it was so simple. A child could understand it. Thank you. But and not question it. Yes. It was simple, yet it was so profound, mm -hmm. so um, uh, penetrating the spirit. Yes. Um, the, me the message, uh, the people may have changed. Yes. The culture may have changed over time. But the message of the timeless message of the gospel and the timeless way that Billy Graham preached, you would think if you were listening to any of those sermons to, that were teach that were preached back in 1950 or 1955, you, you would think, think he were... was still preaching to an audience today. That's just how relevant. That's how, and that's again comfort zone, right? I mean, it's not just about music; it's about the gospel. Yes. And, and there's so many people that that you say that, Babby, that attended his his service. People that were interviewed about their Billy Graham experience. They they um, always talked about how how it, it changed them. Yes. How it, it, it solidified their, their relationship with the Lord. But go ahead. Well well here's the bottom line. You know, my point is this. You might like Mexican food, I might like soul food, somebody else might like Chinese food. But we cannot be so close minded. To, to where we, we say, well, Mexican food is the only food on the planet that's worth eating. Huh, right. <laughs> well, don't don't tell that to my don't tell that to me when I've slaved over the stove uh -oh. you know on Thanksgiving Day. Uh -oh. I want my kids to say, Mama, this is this dressing is you do you do know that I have my own secret recipe for dressing. It is the most bomb dressing on the planet. It, we'll talk about that. But you see, <laughs> I we don't want to be so close minded uh -huh. to where we say this is the only kind of music there is, wow. or this is the only way to sing gospel music. That's or right. This is the only style you can sing gospel music in. Come on now. So, you know, here, here on comfort zone, you know, we, we want to stretch your yeah. thinking. We want to challenge you. Yes. We want to challenge you mm -hmm. and, and we want to take you some places that make you think about why it is we like a certain thing or a certain style. Exactly. And we want to just kind of push that uh, envelope a little bit to make you think about your preferences and, 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 and maybe broaden your, your horizons. preferences and broaden your horizons. Exactly. Right. Well, I'm DJ High Praise. You can find me on, on Facebook. Just Google me and you'll find my Facebook page. Leave me a message and send us, uh, well, send us a, a, a title that you may be interested in that is your comfort zone. And I'm Babby Mason, and you can reach out to me. You can visit my official website at babby.com. Babby is spelled B-A-B-B-I-E. Reach out to me at babby.com or uh, or go to my, um, just Google, um, man, you know, I Googled my you name the other day. find her anywhere. It scared the living day <laughs> <laughs> daylights out of me. But never, nevertheless, reach out to me at babby.com or babbymasonradio.com. And uh, or Facebook and leave me a message and um, let us know, you know, if this stirred up some conversations, you know, basically what we want to do is to is to provoke you a little bit, inspire you, challenge you to generate other conversations around your table, uh, around the coffee table, around the dinner table. Yes. But do it in love. Yes. You know, it's not about. Who's it's right all about love or who that's right. It's not about who's right or who's wrong because in my Bible, uh, I, I know my Bible is right. Something else is wrong. Okay. So it's all Sing about, song. come on now. Nah. So, <laughs> so the bottom line is Jesus is right. Always. All, and the devil is wrong. Always. And, and that's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's all there is to it. The rest of us, Love one another. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us. We love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Special thanks to Nathan Woodward for allowing us to use his music as our theme song. 